Welcome to my series 100 Scientists Who Influence the World, where I've taken a diverse mix of people and broken them down into different categories. There are some famous scientists as well as some lesser known ones, but all of these people have had an influence on the world. Over the years, there have been some scientists that have made such massive discoveries that their names have become famous around the world. Ask somebody to name a famous scientist and there are some names you are guaranteed are going to come up. So, who are some of these famous faces? Sir Isaac Newton Born in 1643 in England, Sir Isaac Newton had a lonely childhood and was interested in designing different devices contrary to his mother's wishes for him to become a farmer. Newton went on to study at the University of Cambridge, however due to the Great Plague the university had to close and Newton had to return home. This is where we get the famous story about Newton sitting in his orchard at home. While sitting there, he observed an apple falling from a tree down to the ground, and this made Newton wonder what force actually makes objects move, such as an apple to the ground or the earth around the sun. From this, Newton developed the theory of gravity. After a meeting with Edmund Halley to discuss gravity, funds were made available for the publishing of probably the most significant book in science, the Principia Mathematica, in which Newton laid out his three laws of motion, which explain what makes objects move or stop, what makes them speed up, slow down or change direction, and how for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. By detailing the theory of gravity, developing calculus and explaining the forces that make the universe work, Newton's work has greatly transformed the world of science. Albert Einstein Albert Einstein was born in 1879 in Germany. Einstein was slow to develop speech and when he did talk he usually spoke in whispers. Einstein was a keen violinist and he worked in a patent office but in his spare time he liked to write theories about space. In 1905, Einstein published his theory of special relativity, which started to draw links between space and time and how these could be changed. In 1915, Einstein published an expansion of special relativity, which he referred to as general relativity, and this was written to include gravity. At this point, Einstein theorised that space and time are actually the same thing, like two sides of a coin, and combined they are referred to as space-time. Einstein predicted that the light from a particular star would be observed during an eclipse due to the bending of space-time by gravity. This was observed by the British scientist Arthur Eddington, proving it to be correct. Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared calculates energy and shows that even a small amount of matter can have a massive amount of energy. This allowed physicists to understand that they could gain energy from atoms and led to the development of the nuclear bomb. Einstein travelled the world giving lectures and received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921. As his theories were proven right, Einstein became famous the world over and changed physics forever. Marie Curie Marie Curie was born in 1867 in Poland and she started her scientific career studying in Paris where she met her husband Pierre Curie. Together they studied the newly discovered phenomenon of radioactivity and established that radioactivity comes from the disintegration of atoms. This led to Marie, Pierre and also Henri Becquerel being awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for their work on radioactivity. Marie continued her research in radioactivity and in 1911 was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for her discovery of two new elements, radium and polonium. Marie pioneered the use of radioactive isotopes in medicine, developed the first radioactivity lab in the world, developed mobile radiography units to provide x-rays at field hospitals during World War I, and her research led to the development of new technologies such as the Geiger counter. Despite facing discrimination and prejudice, Marie continued with her scientific pursuits, becoming a trailblazer and a role model for women in science. She is often described as one of the most influential scientists in the world. She was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize and the first person ever to win two Nobel Prizes. Galileo Galilei Galileo Galilei was born in 1546 in Italy and originally intended to study medicine but he became more interested in mathematics and physics. When Galileo heard of the invention of the telescope, he decided to build one for himself. 
Despite initially being built to watch ships out at sea, Galileo decided to turn his telescope towards the night sky and he made some incredible discoveries. He discovered there are mountains and valleys on the moon, he discovered four moons of Jupiter, now known as the Galilean moons, and he discovered spots on the sun, identifying that the sun rotates. Another great observation Galileo made was the phases of Venus, and this showed that when Copernicus said that the sun is at the centre of the solar system and the planets orbit around it, that he was right. A famous story about Galileo says that he decided to experiment with motion by dropping cannonballs from the Leaning Tower of Pisa to show that objects of the same volume but different mass would fall at the same speed. Whether he actually did this experiment or just thought about it doesn't matter, because it paved the way for work later done by Sir Isaac Newton. Despite now being considered one of the most important figures in the history of science, the Catholic Church did not like the work Galileo was doing, and as such, he spent the last nine years of his life in prison. Charles Darwin Charles Darwin was born in 1809 in England, and he originally intended to study medicine, but he hated the sight of blood, so instead he switched focus to the natural world. In 1831, Darwin joined a five-year scientific expedition on board the HMS Beagle, which was captained by Robert Fitzroy, who later went on to form the Met Office, which is the UK's National Weather Service. While on this expedition, Darwin drew sketches of the different animals and plants that he saw, and while on the Galapagos Islands, he was fascinated by the number of different beak shapes and sizes that he saw on the birds based on their diet. Darwin researched his theory of evolution for a very long time and eventually published his landmark book on the origin of species in 1858, detailing the theory of evolution. This book went against the religious thinking of the time, but was very quickly accepted by the scientific community. Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection explains the diversity of life that we see today and it separated religion and science. If you want to know more about evolution, I'll put a link in the description to my video, 10 Things You Should Know About Evolution. Rosalind Franklin Rosalind Franklin was born in 1920 in England and set her sights on science early on, going on to study at Cambridge University. Franklin received her PhD in 1945 and moved to Paris to study the crystal structures of chemicals using x-rays. By the 1950s, a lot of scientists were studying deoxyribonucleic acid, better known as DNA, and Franklin, who was now back working in London, decided to research DNA using x-rays. In one of the photos that she took, photo 51, she detailed the double helix structure of DNA. As well as her work on DNA, Franklin also contributed to molecular biology by studying the structure of viruses, providing important insights into the nature of viral infections, and her work detailing the structure of coal and graphite proved important for understanding their properties. In 1962, Francis Crick, James Watson and Morris Wilkins received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their work on DNA. Franklin had died in 1958, so could not be awarded the Nobel Prize, and her contributions were widely forgotten by the people at that time. However, these days Franklin's contributions are widely recognised, and she has a legacy which continues to inspire others. Ada Lovelace Ada Lovelace was born in 1815 in England, and when she was young, her mother insisted that she have expert tutors in maths and science. Later at a town party, Ada met Charles Babbage and he introduced her to his Difference Engine, an early version of the calculator. Babbage became a mentor to Ada and later on she would work on his analytical machine, a mechanical general purpose computer that Babbage never received enough funds to be able to finish. Ada was responsible for translating the French engineer's notes into English while also exploring the capabilities of the machine herself. In 1843, Ada published a paper showing how the analytical machine could be used to work out Bernoulli numbers. In this paper, however, she had also written the first algorithm for the computer to process, and this is considered the first computer program. Ada Lovelace died in 1852 and her notes were lost for a long time. However, in 1953, these were published in a book about computing, which showed that computers follow patterns and that Ada had developed the idea of a computer language. 
These days, Ada's work is widely recognised by organisations and institutions around the world and continues to influence the world of computer science. Michael Faraday Michael Faraday was born in 1791 in England. He was the son of a blacksmith and received a very basic education, learning how to read and write at a church Sunday school. Faraday then went out to work as a newspaper delivery boy at the age of 13 and was later apprenticed to a bookbinder. Faraday's life changed forever when he was offered a ticket to a lecture being given by leading chemist Humphrey Davy and this got Faraday interested in science. Later on, Faraday actually went on to become Davy's assistant at the Royal Institution. Faraday's work mostly looked at combining electricity and magnetism as one force known as electromagnetism. In 1821, Faraday developed the first electric motor by passing a magnet through a coil of wire to produce an electrical current. The ability to harness the power of electromagnetic energy had the potential to replace machines that were at the time being powered by horses, water and steam. Later on, Faraday invented the transformer to reduce electric voltages making objects safer to use and he also developed the dynamo which is the first electric generator. The results of Faraday's work are all around us, with every electrical item containing a motor, while transformers and generators provide our power. Louis Pasteur Louis Pasteur was born in 1822 in France. He received a Doctor of Science degree from a teacher training college in Paris, going on to become a chemistry teacher and quickly progressing through academia, taking up more senior positions. In the 1860s, Pasteur's research showed that heating a liquid to 55 degrees Celsius would kill bacteria in the liquid without changing the taste. This process was quickly adopted by the dairy industry. This process, known as pasteurisation, is still used today to purify milk. Also in the 1860s, Pasteur was researching why diseases were destroying silkworm cocoons. At this time it was still thought that diseases came from out of nowhere, however Pasteur discovered that there were germs infecting the silkworm cocoons and this showed that diseases actually come from bacteria and other harmful microorganisms. Following on from this work in 1885, Pasteur developed a vaccine for rabies. This was tested on an 8 year old boy who had been bitten by an infected dog and the boy made a full recovery. To this day, vaccines for rabies as well as other diseases are common. All of the scientists that I am featuring have had an influence on the world, but the work of Louis Pasteur is responsible for saving millions of lives. Stephen Hawking Stephen Hawking was born in 1942 in England and he enjoyed science and stargazing as he was growing up. Hawking completed a degree in natural sciences in 1962 at the University of Oxford and then went on to complete his PhD at Cambridge University. However, in 1963, Hawking had been diagnosed with motor neuron disease which affected his nerve cells. Despite doctors estimating that Hawking only had around two years to live, he defied the odds and lived for a further 55 years. At the time when Hawking was researching, many scientists including Albert Einstein had suggested the idea of black holes but reckoned that not much would ever be known about them. Hawking discovered that particles would actually be able to escape from a black hole in the form of radiation and that if enough radiation left a black hole, the black hole would eventually fade away. This is known as Hawking radiation and went completely against the theory that nothing could escape from a black hole. What really made Hawking famous, however, was the publication of his landmark book, A Brief History of Time, in which he explained the Big Bang and black holes for the everyday reader. Hawking experienced a meteoric rise to fame and became a pop culture figure, appearing in TV shows such as The Simpsons and The Big Bang Theory, and there was even an Oscar winning film made about his life called The Theory of Everything. Thank you for watching this video in my series, 100 Scientists Who Influenced the World. The majority of the information for this video came from the books 100 Scientists Who Made History and the Britannica Guide to the 100 Most Influential Scientists. If you liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content and be sure to check out my other videos such as my STEM demonstration and explanation videos, robotics and coding and my STEM career interviews. This has been STEM with Mr. N's 100 Scientists Who Influenced the World, Famous Faces.